more declined logos today. My name is Andre Leroux. Let's go straight to the first logo. We start today with a rock and roll frog. Not bad. Actually, it's quite good. I love the idea, but there is a lot of work to be done. A very small gap that you have here. I'd recommend no gap or a much bigger one. And some attention to detail needed. If we zoom in on the leg here, yeah, that's just not good enough. Spend a bit more time, make those lines nice and smooth. Same thing up here with the tuning keys on the guitar head. If we turn this part upright, those keys are all over the place. Draw one, make it perfect, then copy paste, then space them properly, then use them on your guitar. Easy and tidy. Your choice of font is not great. A rock and roll logo with Bodini font, really? It's not a very rock and roll font, is it? Someone who likes this will not like that. And someone who likes that will not like this. They come from different planets. Oh yes, and this hand really doesn't work. Short, stubby fingers compared to the frog fingers on the right hand. I hope you keep working on this logo. It's promising. I'd love to see the finished version. Next, a uh, letter H dresser. Weird title, letter H and logo drawer. Doesn't make sense. I like the idea though. I think it can work. The perspective is no good. The lines of the drawers go this way, and if we connect the tops and the bottoms of the H, those lines go this way. So it looks skew. Um, you want them all parallel for an isometric drawing, or you want them to converge in a perspective drawing. And I think I'd make those handles just a little bit bigger and move them down a bit so that the logo works well at smaller sizes. Next, a skull with headphones. Not bad, but way too generic. Uh, standard skull, standard headphones. Nothing wrong with the combination of those two things. Look at these excellent examples. But what all of these have in common is that they have a style or character or personality that sets them apart, that makes them unique. This one is just too ordinary. Next, another skull, a baseball skull logo. Not bad, I like it. Um, at first I thought this guy is blindfolded. That's the mouth, that's the nostrils, uh, so then the eyes are up here, kind of like that, maybe. But I guess that these are the eyes, because you called it a baseball gang logo, so I'm guessing that this is a bandana on the forehead, not a blindfold, and these are in fact the eyes. So that needs to be clarified. Also, when drawing a face, it really helps if you define the center line. It helps you to place the features. Um, if the skull's center line is here between these two teeth, then the eyes need to move over this way a little to straddle the same center line. Next, a beautiful logo, a snake and a gear. I love how the curves of the snake correspond to the teeth of the gear. That is rhythm in action. Lovely. I think these rugby ball shaped eyes don't work. They're not very well done and not necessary. It's still a snake without them. And this tiny little fork in the tongue is no good. Uh, very small detail there. Too small. I think a single line could work here. And if you want a fork in the tongue, that's okay too, but then it has to be a little bigger. And the scales go the wrong way. Um, in all the snakes I know of, the scales in front go on top of the scales behind them. But I'd remove them. I don't think you need the scales. Simpler is better. One more suggestion. Uh, this negative space, would it be possible to have them a consistent width? I don't know if that will work. I don't think you should mold the snake around the teeth, but maybe rounded teeth or somewhere in between. Uh, that might not work, but if it does, I think it will look fantastic. Good logo otherwise. Really well done. Next, a woman in a window. Lots to work on here. You have a massive open space here in the window frame. 
uh, wouldn't it make more sense to make that space correspond to one of the inside shapes? I think it's a missed opportunity to echo that pattern above the head. And some details here and here to take care of. But the main issue is that smiley face. It seems so out of place here. You have a fairly serious vintage icon style design, then a smiley face in the middle. It's like a mustache on the Mona Lisa. It's just completely out of place. Next, a Burger King logo. I think the crown and the burger are both too plain, not very interesting or memorable. But a bigger problem for me is the colors. Assuming this pinkish color is the meat, it looks uncooked, raw meat. And the lettuce is a bluish green. I would not eat this hamburger. If you have food in a logo, it has to look tasty. And the title you chose won't work. Burger King is a very famous brand, so call it King Burger or Crown Burger or Royal Burger, etc. But you can't call it Burger King. Next logo, a keyhole and piano combination. It's a promising design. I really like the long extrude on the keyhole. That's interesting. Um, I don't think the piano keys work here. They are quite small and they look unfinished. Only the three black keys with the two white keys in between and empty space either side. I don't think adding more keys will work. You don't have enough space there. So I would look for a different way to integrate them. Next up, a lion shield logo. The lion isn't bad, a little generic perhaps, but solid drawing work there. Uh, the battlements are less solid. The merlins, that's the upright parts, are not the same size. The one in the middle is bigger. And the embrasures, that's the gaps between the merlins, are also not all the same size. That's simply careless design. You also refer to this thing as wheat. Nope, it is a laurel wreath. In ancient Greece and in ancient Rome, it was used as a symbol of victory or success. You know those leaves that the Caesars would have on their heads? That's it. It's not wheat. From there, it made its way into heraldry and from there into logos. If you're going to make heraldic type logos, you have to understand the elements and their meanings. And this gap between the shield and the leaves is untidy. Normally, you would have the wreath designed around the shield or whatever shape is in the center. It follows the contour or is somehow in harmony with the thing in the center. Um, in your design, it looks like you didn't want to take the time. Next, we have a goat. Beautiful design. I love the composition and I love the colors. Very well done. The problem here is anatomy. The legs seem like they are different lengths and probably way too bulky. Goats have very skinny legs. Also, if we add a line here, the goat below that line has mostly curved lines. Um, the goat above that line has exclusively straight lines. You can of course combine straight and curved lines, but such a clear separation between the two creates some disharmony. And that's it for this video. More logos next time. Thanks for watching.